Welcome back to the UC Normal YouTube channel. My name is Molly. I am just a normal girl, not, not saying I'm an expert in anything. The only thing I might be an expert on is my experiences, although oftentimes I question that too. Today on my YouTube channel, we are going to be talking about establishing care with a new therapist because I am back in this boat because um, my therapist who I've been seeing since 2020 and it's now the middle of 2024, um, is leaving the practice or has left the practice and uh, here we are again. I've had a lot of different therapists in my life. I believe in the right therapist at the right time. I could do an entire video on my beliefs about therapy. I think there are a lot of misconceptions out there. So I just do want to caveat this whole video with I could talk about like all of this stuff for hours, for so long. So if there is something that I say in here, um, um, or maybe don't say, and there's something I don't get around to, do feel free to leave me a comment um, to suggest that video or even to send me a DM over on Instagram. This, I have a new sun catcher. If you do see a rainbow on my face, that is that. There could be a variety of reasons you're seeking a new therapist, or maybe it's your therapist. Maybe you're seeking a therapist for the very first time, or Maybe you're seeking a new one because you didn't like the other one, you didn't drive with them, you're getting a new insurance, so you have to establish care somewhere else. The person's leaving, um, you're moving. There are so many different reasons, and I just told you my reason. So yeah, where he's going, I don't know. I don't know where he's going. This is my dude therapist, though. If you've been watching for a while, this is dude therapist, DT. So that's him, so rip. There are just so so many subtopics basically of category of, of cat in categories of therapy, seeking care, misconceptions out there, and I'm not gonna be able to get around to all of them. If you do have a suggestion, just let me know. So I'm just gonna be trying to walk you through my process right now because right now I don't have a therapist. Right now. So I'm gonna tell you what I'm doing. First thing I did was assess if I still need a therapy because it is a common misconception, I think that if you're in therapy, it means you're in therapy for life. Like, I think some of us think that. Um, it's like once you're in, oh, you're gonna be, you're gonna be just, oh, just endlessly every week of your life, every month of your life, you're committed to that therapy now. It's actually not always the case. And it's actually a choice oftentimes. And so um, in assessing my emotional and my mental health, right now I am looking to continue my therapy. Um, and that is because I have a list of things like right off the top of my head that I could tell you that I'm still working on, that I need help with and I need to get better at. Um, goals that I haven't, like therapeutic goals and things like that that I haven't reached. These things uh, affect me regularly and so that's why I would like to have a professional in there with me talking about these things, giving me tools, homework, things like that. Okay, so the next thing I, I, I said was, okay, where am I gonna go, for example, um, which practice am I going to? Is it dictated by my insurance? This caveat, this could be an entirely new video. I want to say that I had the privilege of being able to stay at the same practice that this guy is at. So what I had to do was go online and look at different provider bios in order to choose a few that looked okay to me. Um, it is entirely different if you are changing insurance, losing insurance, gaining insurance, um, moving to find a, a whole new, you know, practice or care setting that you've never been to before. So I definitely had an advantage here, which was that I felt comfortable at the place that I'm going at. It's near my house. They're flexible with virtual appointments. I'm comfortable with what I'm paying there. My insurance is accepted there, and so I do just wanna say that's that's an advantage of me. Okay, so that gave me a huge leg up and a huge time saver. Um, I basically hit the fast forward button as far as that goes, but you might not be in the same boat because you might be in prior authorization, deductible, whatever hell, and I feel for you, I really do. It's at it's, it's ironic that at some of the lowest points of our lives, lives oftentimes um, were, tasks with, were tasked with the most frustrating administrative tasks like calling people or tr having to advocate for ourselves when really we're not in the state of mind to make that possible 
Um, but for the sake of the length of this video, I am gonna refer to the caveat that, that that'll have to be a different video. So like I said, now that I'm comfortable choosing this practice and continuing with this practice, I turn the, the information available to them on their website. This is not always the case with people. However, this practice is in the 21st century and has bios and photos of the therapist right on their website. So I read through every single one of them and I screenshotted the ones that I thought could help me or that I was interested in seeking care from. Um, and it's better to have an idea, like a handful of ideas of people um, if you're in a situation similar to mine because if you just narrow in on one person, you don't actually know if that person has availability um, and is seeking new patients. So um, you do wanna have some options in there. Don't, you know, don't get your hopes up. However, the website might indicate otherwise. It might say, oh, this person is accepting and like, that's good. The website could also be out of date. So again, don't get your hopes up. So what I'm looking for when I, I'm gonna talk about what I'm looking for when I look at these bios and I'm actually gonna talk about what I'm not looking for as well. So what I'm looking for um, and what I sort of care about in this initial stage of this hunt for this new care professional to add to my treatment team. Note that you might be looking for very different things than I am, but I think it's an interesting exercise to be able to narrow these down so that when you go in to sort of narrowing these down or talking to these people that you have a better idea of what you're actually looking for, like a rubric. So number one is that their, their bio mentions topics or concerns that I struggle with. So for example, <clears throat> they mentioned anger, they mentioned, mentioned mood disorders, they mentioned anxiety. Not a lot will mention personality disorders, um, but those other ones are important. So basically their specialties line up with what I'm looking for. Second is they primarily work with my demographic. And what that means is they do not primarily work with children. I'm not a children. I'm not a child. I'm not a children. Um, they don't primarily work with families, or they more fit what I'm seeking. Um, and then, so similarly, they they primarily work in the style that I'm seeking treatment in. So they do a lot of individual sessions. Um, sure, they might run run group or something like that as well, but they're not necessarily focused on marital counseling. I just feel like. I'm going to leave that for people who are married um, and I'm going to seek someone over here who's doing individual therapy with who, who deals with some of the same concerns that I have. So if that made any sense. And then three is sometimes they'll talk about their philosophy um, on how they see treatment, how they work with clients, um, things like that right in their bio. And it's like clear that they wrote it in a way because it'll say like blank, what blank believes that blah, blah, blah. And so um i like to see that this person aligns with my beliefs or also just the fact that i'm open to what they say in there um and then finally the treatment methods align and so i mean what what i mean by that is i don't know all the terms but um like they're going to use cbt um cbt techniques which are cognitive behavioral therapy techniques or they're going to use like these are all those fancy terms that categorize different things that therapists like kind of tool sets and buckets that therapists might use to help you. Um, they might use DBT, which is like more skills in increasing your mindfulness. Um, so uh, I'm basically open to the treatment methods that they say that they use, or I'm willing to try these. So that is everything that I do care about and that I do look for. Now I'm gonna talk about what I don't care about when I'm reading these bios. Again, you might not care about different things that I don't care about as well so keep these in mind for yourself but for me number one age age of the provider or years of experience does not matter to me um i think especially when you're looking at like general surgery or something uh and your your child's getting a procedure you want the surgeon to be in a certain age group not too young and not too old um and t t um, to be able to provide care to your child uh, in a therapeutic sense, I think that those that are actually younger and they're closer in age to me, I'm 26, um, oftentimes they'll just get things, get things that I'm talking about and that can help a lot. And then also I want to say that years of experience, so if someone says, oh yeah, like three decades of experience, over 30 years of experience, that doesn't necessarily mean knowledge or expertise. 
on their behalf or even like continued learning about things that are happening. So you wanna be careful when they're trying to equate their years of experience like to automatically mean they're really good at what they do. But we're also respect to people who have been in the field for that long, I'm not saying that either. Just an example is like, I had one therapist say to me, I've never heard of an obsessive compulsive personality disorder. And I was like, and then that sent me in this whole spiral of looking when it was added to the DSM and if this woman would have been in school at that time or things had changed since then, it was this whole thing. I'll leave my blog post about it below. But just an example of how years of experience don't necessarily mean everything. You really wanna look for knowledge, expertise, and compassion. Okay, the second thing that does not matter to me is their title. They could be called a counselor, they could be called a social worker, they could be called a therapist, they could be called a psychologist. I do not care. I do not care. They could have a PhD. They could have a PhD behind their name. Um, I don't care, just let me know what to call you. I'm not gonna choose you because you have, you know, your PSYD, your PsyD or whatever. Uh, and this other person is a licensed social worker. I'm not gonna, so that's something I don't care about. Just tell me if you want to be called doctor and if you can be called doctor. Um, three, I do not care where you got your degree from. I'm not going to even read that paragraph. And four, gender. And so I do want to speak to this one for a second. Um, I'm very cognizant of gender and often think about how it does impact and how it may impact my therapy in my life and things that I go to therapy for, actually. Um, I found therapeutic success with men and women uh, therapists. And I'm, work, and I'm open to working with um, therapists of any gender. I also believe in the right therapist at the right time. And so, for example, I wouldn't be particularly excited about talking about boy problems and sex and things with like some 40 year old dude um, while I was in college. While I was in college, I actually had a much younger woman who I felt really comfortable talking to things like that about. Um, and then, of course, you know, in the past four years, I've had a middle-aged dude who kind of tells it like it is, and he's no nonsense, and I kind of have to explain pieces of technology to him and pieces of regeneration to him. And so I've, I've run the gamut, I think is how you say that. I've run the gamut. Um, and so at the time when I'm filming this, I'm not paying attention. I'm not choosing a certain gender over other genders. I... I'm, I'm cognizant of it, like I said, I think about it. I'm sort of more interested in the things that I mentioned before that I care about right now than the therapist gender. I know this is not necessarily the case for everyone. So of course I'm respectful of that. And now for the fun part, it's calling the clinic. So I need to now call the clinic to schedule an intake appointment. Um, Spoiler is I actually did that this morning and it went fine, but I did that. I have a an appointment upcoming next month. And before that happens, I am going to see you back here with a part two talking about how I prep for the intake appointment, having the intake appointment, including questions to ask your new therapist, and then how to evaluate how that appointment went. That does not mean that's going to be my therapist. I'm just beginning therapist shopping. That's part two. So I will see you next, back here in my next video in part two. Make sure that you subscribe if you're not so that you see this video when it's coming. And thank you so much for watching. Bye.